Okay, so I want to do a little section on boots and wraps and standing wraps, spell boots too. Um, just as an overview, it's extremely important that you put the boots on properly. It's better to not put boots on at all than to put them on improperly. You can actually really hurt the horse if you put the boots on wrong. You can blow out tendons. and So I'd rather you not boot at all if you don't feel confident that you know how to boot properly. All right? Uh, we boot the horses up for a ton of different reasons. It's mostly protection and support. Protection and support is pretty much what we do um, most of the booting for. Um, so let's, um, so that's an overview. Let's talk about, we can start with bell boots, okay? There's a bunch of different kinds of bell boots. They're for a horse that oversteps, all right? So when the hind foot tends to overstep the front foot and grab it, so they'll grab the bulb of their heel. So you wanna protect that with certain horses. Certain horses uh, need to wear bell boots when they're working. Um, this is just a very typical, inexpensive bell boot. You always want the top straps to go towards the tail, okay? So when you put the bell boots on, they strap here, they Velcro there, and then they Velcro there. Those always point towards the tail. And then you know that you have them on correctly. All right? And so the, the other one is exactly the same. It's just... We don't need to put it on. You guys get the point. Well, we could boot. You want to be booted up? You don't need to be booted up. So there's your bell boot. All right. This is my favorite kind. I call these galloping boots. You can call them brush boots. You can call them, um, what else can we call these? Support boots. They're made by Dover. I love them. They're up on the products I recommend in Why Now. Um, the Dover boots, they're inexpensive and they're fabulous. They last forever, they look great. Uh, you can get them in white, brown, and black in all the different sizes. I love them. Um, they're called Dover boots, but I'll put them up on the product, okay? So when you put boots on, I'm not sure if Miss Anna's gonna need to move, but when you put boots on, you wanna wrap the back of the boot around the tendon. You want to support the suspensory tendons. There's all sorts of tendons running down here, right? You want to support that. So you cup it, all right, just under the knee, and then you strap it closed. It's a little hard with my broken arm. And the straps always go towards the tail. See how these straps go towards the tail? The straps always pull towards the tail, all right? So just under the knee, Okay, cup it just under the knee, wrap the back around, grab the front snug, and relax, snug across the front, and relax. Okay, let me explain that a little bit. So when you feel it, you'll feel that it's cupping just around the inside of her fetlock. And I can put the other one on, Anna, so you can see that. Let's talk just a little bit about pulling across the front, all right? So this is bone. These are tendons. So you want to make sure when you pull, you pull against the bone. Relax around the tendon. All right? Just under the knee, cup the tendon, pull against the bone, relax, pull against the bone, relax, and there's your boot. And if you put it on like that, you're putting it on correctly. Oops, let me fix that one. This, it got a little, it's too high. See how there's a gap there? I overdid it up by the knee. So we'll make it a little bit better. There you go. And if you feel here, you'll feel that it's cupping her fetlock. All right, good. We decided that we would go ahead and put the boots on this side too. So the bell boots, just remember, the straps point towards the tail. When you put the galloping boots on, wrap around the tendon, pull against the bone, release, pull against the bone, release, and see it cups the fetlock really nicely, and then you know it fits nicely. And there you go. We're putting um, exercise wraps. They're called polo wraps. You can get them in every darn color under the rainbow. 
You can get them in really, really fun kid colors. Wraps are really fun because they can be super colorful and add a bunch of charm to your apparel, your horse apparel. These are white for a bay horse. Um, now, wraps take a lot of practice. It's hard to put them on. Look at Ladybug. Look at Ladybug. She's taking in the lesson. Good girl. She's thinking really, really hard about all this. She's so smart. It's um, hard to put wraps on properly. I've been doing it for 45 years. I make it look really easy, and I mean really easy. It's not so easy. It takes a lot of practice. But what I want to do is I just want to make sure that you guys are putting the wraps on properly, okay? So the same idea, pull against the bone and loosen around the tendon. Against the bone, loosen around the tendon. You're always pulling towards the tail. If you pull towards the tail, then you're pulling against the bone and not the tendon. All right? So this is the hardest part of these. You put it on just under their knee and you've got this little flap and you put that down. Okay? And that keeps it from sliding. It locks it in. After that, you're pretty much golden. So you go up one. All right? You end up just below their knee. All right? And then depending on how long the cannon, remember the parts of the horse, the cannon, and how long your particular pair of polo wraps are, is going to dictate how much you overlap. All right? But I know this mare has a pretty average cannon. They're pretty much average polo. So I know I'm going to overlap by about half. All right? Pull across the front. Release. Pull across the front. Now this is tricky. Don't go too low. They'll slide down and they will gap. All right? You want to just cup the back of their fetlock. Parts of the horses again. Just cup the back of the fetlock. All right? Then you work your way back up. Pull and soften. Pull and soften. Pull and soften. And if you're magic, you end up right in the middle of their leg perfectly with the Velcro. Perfect. If you're lucky and the gods are with you, it ends up looking like that. Okay, let's do the other one. Okay, pretty girl. Let's do, oh, let's do the hind. How about that? Yeah, we're gonna do a hind. Oh, yeah, because you guys need to see when you do them, um, tie the tail up. Here's a new a little section for you, Miss Anna, tying the tail up, all right? Uh, it gets, gets it out of the way, tying the tail up, gets it out of the way. You take it, you create a loop, all right? Pull it through and keep that part sticking up, and you've got what we call a mud knot. We call this a mud knot. It's a great way to get the tail out of the way. To release, pull the end, dun, 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 dun. All right, again, takes a little bit of practice, but you create a loop, bring it through, it's like a slip knot. Push it up, and then to release it. Takes two seconds. All right, so when you put wraps or boots on them behind, you, uh, tying the tail, it just gets it out of the way. All right, now, just as a rule of thumb, uh, most people, I don't want to say most people, we boot up um, and wrap the front legs more than the back legs. Um, some horses, uh, most horses, a lot of horses do not need their back legs wrapped or booted. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap her hind so you guys can see it's exactly the same as the front. Start off exactly the same. Take the little piece down, okay? Go over it to lock it in. All right, then work your way down. The back um, cannons are longer, so I might kind of overlap a little bit less. Pull against the front, release. Pull against the front, release. Cup the back of the fetlock. And then start working your way back up. Pull and release, pull and release. And if the moon and the stars and the planets line up, You'll end up in the middle of their sweet leg, Velcroed. It's better if the Velcro ends up here, but it's not a big deal. If it ends up there, it's perfectly fine. And there's your back leg wrap. 
is an right. exercise wrap. This is a standing wrap. So this is not to school the horses. This is for um, wrapping injured legs, uh, supporting an injury. Uh, some people trailer with them, the racehorses trailer in standing wraps. Um, a support wrap for while they're in their bedroom, if they've had a serious jumping session. Some of the trainers, some of the hunter jumper trainers, some of the dressage trainers, they put their horses in four standing wraps every night. Um, it's just what they do. They put them in standing wraps at night. It's part of their um, system, all right? I never put standing wraps on unless I absolutely have to. So you need a quilt and you need a track wrap. Different than the polo wraps, all right? The polo wraps are for exercise. You don't want to put a track wrap on to exercise, all right? The track wraps are to go over the quilts. Bunch of different kinds of quilts, bunch of different kinds of track wraps, bunch of different colors. Find what you like, all right? So it's exactly the same idea. Again, just takes a lot of practice. Just takes a lot of practice. When you first start doing this, you're going to be really awkward. You just have to practice, all right? Hopefully you guys won't get too much practice with your standing wraps, because I think of the standing wraps as veterinary, and we hope that we don't have any veterinary issues, <laughs> right? So hopefully you guys never have to use this, ever. But if you do, um, so it's the same idea, all right? You're always pulling towards the tail, against the bone, correct? With the standings, depending on, I mean the quilts, depending on how long they are, you know you might end up way up here up above their knee and further down on their um, fetlock pastern, right? Totally okay. Okay, now, it takes a lot of coordination and you hope your horse doesn't move, but this mare is being so good. She hasn't moved an inch. She's being so good. Same idea as the polo wraps, all right? You start in about the same place. These are dirty because they've been sitting around because I don't use them, thank goodness, okay? Same idea, start about there, pull the little flappy down, right? Exactly the same as the polos. Home here, and you hope your horse doesn't move, and then you go up over. I always leave a nice little inch of white at the top, all right? Work your way down, pull against the front, Release, pull against the front, release, pull against the front, release. And I always leave an inch at the bottom. This, these you don't have to cup around their fetlocks in the same way because they're not going to be schooling in them. All right? It's more pr for protection and support. So you don't have to cup around in the same way. You can just kind of take it to there. Leave the pretty little inch of white. Work your way up. Try not to drop it like I just did. So I'm going to re do this, but just so you guys know, that's what you're all going to be doing when you're learning. You're going to be fumbling, and you're going to drop it by accident, and then you're going to try to just make it work anyway, like I just did. Then the Velcro, around the Velcro, and there's your beautiful support wrap. And they can sleep in those. They can sleep in those, they can hang out in those, they can get shipped in them. Um, you don't want to exercise in them. This little horse is such a good girl. Oh, this is kind of fun. So we've got a polo wrap here, a schooling wrap here. We've got a galloping boot, a support boot there, a bell boot there, and a standing wrap there. I didn't mean to do that, but that's actually kind of fun, and it worked out really great. So I'm going to do the, um, we're going to take a little moment, and I'm going to do this one again without the fumble. Okay, when you prepare wraps, all right, you have to know how to roll them so that the Velcro ends up on the outside, all right? So you have to take the Velcro into the Velcro. When you roll them, take the Velcro into the Velcro. If you don't, you're going to end up having to redo it, all right? And always have these, <laughs> she's down here, always have these prepared and ready to go. You always have them rolled, all right? So Velcro into Velcro, Velcro, and you start rolling into Velcro. Now, I've gotten really good at it, and this is the way I do it. Different people roll their, good girl, thank you for getting off the quilt. Different people roll them differently. This is the way I roll them. I love them. You always want them to be prepared. You always want them nicely rolled, nicely prepared. I'm going to put this one on without the fumble. Good girl. So you can stick it under your arm. 
Again, like I said, I make all of this look really easy. It's not so easy at all. Have your quilt rolled, all right? And then, same exact game. Bring it around. I'm going to go a little faster this time because I already showed you guys how to do it. Let's see if I can do it without fumbling it because I don't get to practice the standings very often. Good girl. Take your little flap down. Right? Go up one. And you know you want them pretty, I mean, snug. You want them snug because they're supporting, so they're snug. Go down, you don't have to cup around the fetlock, leave a pretty little band of white, work your way back up, be aware of what your horse is doing with their back leggies. Okay, and if it all works out great, you end up right about in the middle of their leg, and there it is, and there's a beautiful standing wrap. Voila! When you unwrap, don't try to wrap them as you're unwrapping them. I promise, I know it sounds like a good idea and all of you are like, oh, but it's, it isn't. And if you go to the show barns and you watch the grooms, do what they do, all right? Don't try to roll it as you're unwrapping it. This is how it should look as you're unwrapping it. Now, obviously, be aware that you're behind your horse, right? This is how you unwrap a wrap, standing quilt track. And then you just set it somewhere. So you go into the show barns and there's piles of these. They look like this, everywhere. Before you leave for the day, the grooms come through, roll the wraps. I know, she's wiggling her feet around, I'm watching. Before they leave, before the professional grooms leave, before your working students leave, or before Claire leaves, roll them and put them somewhere rolled and organized.